Oldsmobile was a brand of American automobiles produced for most of its existence by General Motors. Olds Motor Vehicle Co. was founded by Ransom E. Olds in 1897. It produced over 35 million vehicles, including at least 14 million built at its Lansing, Michigan factory. At the time of its closure in 2004, Oldsmobile was the oldest surviving American automobile mark, and one of the oldest in the world, after Peugeot, Mann and Tatra. History Early history, 1897–1929 Oldsmobiles were first manufactured by the Olds Motor Vehicle Co., in Lansing, Michigan, a company founded by Ransom E. Olds in 1897. In 1902, the company produced 635 cars, making it the first high-volume gasoline-powered automobile manufacturer. Electric car manufacturers such as Columbia Electric and steam-powered car manufacturers such as Locomobile had higher volumes a few years earlier. Oldsmobile became the top-selling car company in the United States for a few years around 1903 to 4. Ransom Olds left the company in 1904 because of a dispute and formed the Rio Motor Car Company. The 1902–1904 Oldsmobile Curved Dash was the first mass-produced car, made from the first automotive assembly line, an invention that is often miscredited to Henry Ford and the Ford Motor Company. Ford was the first to manufacture cars on a moving assembly line, after Olds merged Olds Motor Vehicle Co., with the Olds Gas Engine Works in 1899, it was renamed Olds Motor Works and moved to a new plant in Detroit, located at the corner of East Jefferson Avenue and MacArthur Bridge. By March 1901, the company had a whole line of models ready for mass production. However, a mistake by a worker caused the factory to catch fire, and it burned to the ground, with all of the prototypes destroyed. The only car that survived the fire was a curved dash prototype, which was wheeled out of the factory by two workers while escaping the fire. A new factory was built in Lansing, and production of the curved dash commenced. Officially, the cars were called Olds Automobiles, but were colloquially referred to as Oldsmobiles. It was this moniker, as applied especially to the curved Dash Olds, that was popularized in the lyrics and title of the 1905 hit song, In My Merry Oldsmobile. The last Oldsmobile curved Dash was made in 1907. General Motors purchased the company in 1908. The 1910 Limited Touring was a high point for the company. Riding atop 42 inch wheels, and equipped with factory, white. Tires, the Limited was the prestige model in Oldsmobile's two model lineup. The Limited retailed for $4,600, an amount greater than the purchase of a new, no frills three bedroom house. Buyers received goatskin upholstery, a 60 horsepower 45 kilowatts 707 SID 11.6L straight six engine, Bosch Magneto starter, running boards, and room for five. Options included a speedometer, clock, and a full glass windshield. A limousine version was priced at $5,800. While Oldsmobile only sold 725 Limiteds in its three years of production, the car is best remembered for winning a race against the famed 20th Century Limited train, an event immortalized in the painting setting the pace by William Hardner Foster. In 1926, the Oldsmobile 6 came in five body styles, and ushered in a new GM body style platform called the GMB Platform. Shared with Buick products, in 1929, as part of General Motors' companion make program, Oldsmobile introduced the higher standard Viking brand, marketed through the Oldsmobile dealer network. Viking was discontinued already at the end of the 1930 model year although an additional 353 cars were marketed as 1931 models. Topic. 1930s. In 1937, Oldsmobile was a pioneer in introducing a four-speed semi-automatic transmission called the Automatic Safety Transmission, although this accessory was actually built by Buick, which would offer it in its own cars in 1938. This transmission features a conventional clutch pedal, which the driver presses before selecting either low or high range. In low, the car shifts between first and second gears. In high, the car shifts among first, third and fourth gears. Topic: 1940s. For the 1940 model, Oldsmobile was the first auto manufacturer to offer a fully automatic transmission called the Hydromatic, which features four forward speeds. 
It has a gas pedal and a brake no clutch pedal. The gear selector is on the steering column. Starting in 1941 and continuing through 1999, Oldsmobile used a two digit model designation. As originally implemented, the first digit signifies the body size while the second represents the number of cylinders. Body sizes were 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 6 and 8 cylinder engines were offered. Thus, Oldsmobiles were named 66 through 98. The last pre war Oldsmobile rolled off the assembly line on February 5, 1942. During World War II, Oldsmobile produced numerous kinds of material for the war effort, including large caliber guns and shells. Production resumed on October 15, 1945 with a warmed-over 1942 model serving as the offering for 1946. Oldsmobile once again was a pioneer when, for the 1949 model, the rocket engine was introduced, which used an overhead valve V8 design rather than the flathead straight eight design which prevailed at the time. This engine produced far more power than the other engines that were popular during that era, and found favor with hot rodders and stock car racers. The basic design, with a few minor changes, endured until Oldsmobile redesigned its V8 engines in the mid-1960s. Topic: 1950s. Oldsmobile entered the 1950s following a divisional image campaign centered on its rocket engines and its car's appearance followed suit. Oldsmobile's rocket V8 engine was the leader in performance, its cars were generally considered the fastest on the market, and by the mid-1950s their styling was among the first to offer a wide, open more grille, suggestive of jet propulsion. Oldsmobile adopted a ringed globe emblem to stress what marketers felt was its universal appeal. Throughout the 1950s, the make used twin jet pod styled taillights as a nod to its rocket theme. Oldsmobile was among the first of General Motors divisions to receive a true hardtop in 1950 called the Holiday Coupe. Buick's version was called the Riviera, and Cadillac's was called the Coupe de Ville. And it was also among the first divisions along with Buick and Cadillac to receive a wraparound windshield, a trend that eventually all American makes would share at some time between 1953 and 1964. New for 1954 on 98 coupes and convertibles Starfire would be front and rear sweep cut fender styling, which would not show up on a Chevrolet until 1956 and not until 1957 on a Pontiac. In the 1950s the nomenclature changed again, and trim levels also received names that were then mated with the model numbers. This resulted in the Oldsmobile 88 emerging as Base Dynamic 88 and the Highline Super 88. Other full-size model names included the Holiday, used on hardtops, and Fiesta, used on its station wagons. When the 88 was retired in 1999 with a 50th anniversary edition, its length of service was the longest model name used on American cars after the Chrysler New Yorker. Mid-1955 also saw the introduction of the four-door holiday pillarless hardtop, the industry's first along with Buick. General Motors styling as a whole lost its frontrunner status in 1957 when Chrysler introduced Virgil Exner's forward look designs. When compared side to side, Oldsmobile looked dated next to its price point competitor DeSoto. Compounding the problem for Oldsmobile and Buick was a styling mistake which GM called the Strato Roof. Both makes had models which contained the heavily framed rear window, but Detroit had been working with large curved backlights for almost a decade. Consumers disliked the roof and its blind spots, forcing GM to rush a redesign into production on some of its models. Oldsmobile's only off year in the 1950s was 1958. The nation was beginning to feel the results of its first significant post-war recession, and U.S. automobile sales were down for the model year. Oldsmobile, Buick and Cadillac received a heavy-handed makeover of the 1957 GM designs. The Oldsmobile that emerged in 1958 bore little resemblance to the design of its forerunners, instead the car emerged as a large, overdecorated, chromie mobile, which many felt had overly ostentatious styling. Up front, all 1958 Oldsmobiles received one of General Motors' heavily styled front fascias and quad headlights. Streaking back from the edge of the headlights was a broad belt consisting of two strips of chrome on regular 88s, three strips on Super 88s, and three strips top and bottom thin, inside thick on 98s that ended in a point at mid-body. The bottom of the rear fender featured a thick stamping of a half tube that pointed forward, atop which was a chrome assembly of four horizontal chrome speed lines that terminated into a vertical bar. The tail of the car featured massive vertical chrome tail light housings. 
Two chrome stars were fitted to the trunk lid. Ford styling consultant Alex Tremulus, designer of the 1948 Tucker sedan, mocked the 1958 Oldsmobile by drawing cartoons of the car and placing musical notes in the rear trim assembly. Another Detroit stylist employed by Ford bought a used 1958 Oldsmobile in the early 1960s, driving it daily to work. He detached and rearranged the Oldsmobile lettering above the grille to spell out slob model as a reminder to himself and co-workers of what bad auto design meant to their business. In 1959, Oldsmobile models were completely redesigned with a rocket motif from front to rear, as the top of the front fenders had a chrome rocket, while the body length fins were shaped as rocket exhausts which culminated in a fin top taillight concave on the 98 models while convex on the 88 models. The 1959 models also offered several roof treatments, such as the pillared sedan with a fastback rear window and the holiday sports eden, which was a flat roof pillarless hardtop with wraparound front and rear glass. The 1959 models were marketed as the linear look and also featured a bar graph speedometer which showed a green indicator through 35 miles per hour, 56 kilometers per hour, then changed to orange until 65 miles per hour, 105 kilometers per hour, then was red above that until the highest speed read by the speedometer, 120 miles per hour, 190 kilometers per hour. Power windows were available on the 98 models as was two-speed electric windshield wipers with electrically powered windshield washers. The 88 still relied on vacuum-operated windshield wipers without a washer feature. 1959 Oldsmobiles were offered with Autronic I, a dashboard-mounted automatic headlight dimmer, as well as factory-installed air conditioning and power-operated front bench seat as available options. The 1959 body style was continued through the 1960 model year, but the fins were toned down for 1960 and the taillights were moved to the bottom of the fenders. Topic notable achievements and models, 1960–1969 Notable achievements for Oldsmobile in the 1960s included the introduction of the first turbocharged engine in 1962 the turbo jet fire, the first modern front-wheel drive car produced in the United States the 1966 Toronado, the Vista Cruiser station wagon noted for its roof glass, and the upscale 442 muscle car. Olds briefly used the names Jetstar 88 (1964–1966) and Delmont 88 (1967–1968) on its least expensive full-size models in the 1960s. Notable models for the 1960s: Oldsmobile 442 began as a 1964 muscle car option package, four-barrel carburetor, four-speed manual transmission, and two exhausts on the F85 Cutlass. In 1965, to better compete with the Pontiac GTO, the original 330 Cid V8 rated at 310 horsepower, 231 kilowatts, was replaced by a new 400 Cid V8 rated at 345 horsepower, 257 kilowatts. The 442 definition was changed to 400 Cid V8 engine, 4 barrel carburetor, and 2 exhaust pipes, and was named by Carcraft Nationals as the top car of 1965. In 1968 the 442 became its own model and got a larger, 455 Cid 7 .5 L, V8 engine in 1970. Oldsmobile Cutlass 1961 midsize car. Oldsmobile's best-seller in the 1970s and 1980s, and in some of those years America's best-selling car. In 1966 a top-line Cutlass Supreme was introduced as a four-door hardtop sedan with a more powerful 320 horsepower 239 kilowatts 330 Sid Jetfire Rocket V8 than the regular F85, Cutlass models, a more luxurious interior and other trimmings. In 1967 the Cutlass Supreme was expanded to a full series also including two-door hardtop and pillared coupes, a convertible and a four-door pillared sedan. It also came with a 6.6L 400 SID engine as an option in 1967. Oldsmobile F85 1961 compact sedan, coupé and station wagon powered by a 215 SID aluminum block V8 engine from 1961 to 1963. In 1964 the F85 was upgraded to an intermediate-sized car and the aluminum V8 was replaced by conventional cast-iron six-cylinder and V8 engines. The Cutlass was initially the top model of the F85 line but became a separate model by 1965 with the F85 nameplate continued only on the lowest priced models through the 1972 model year, after which all Oldsmobile intermediates were Cutlasses. 
Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser (1964–1977), a stretched wheelbase Cutlass station wagon, which was stretched to 120 from 115 in the 1964–67 models and to 121 from 116 in the 1968–72 models, the stretched area being in the second row seating area. This car featured an elevated roof over the rear seat and cargo area and glass skylights over the rear seating area, which consisted of a transverse skylight over the second seat two piece from 1964 to 1967, one piece from 1968 to 1972 and small longitudinal skylights directly over the rear cargo area windows, and also featured standard second row sunvisors. The three-seat models featured forward-facing seating, at a time when most three-seat station wagons had the third row of seats facing the rear. From 1965 to 1970, it would be Oldsmobile's flagship station wagon, as no full-sized wagons were produced. The third generation 1973-77 models no longer had skylights other than an optional front row pop-up sunroof. This car was merely an upline trim package on the Cutlass Supreme wagon and carried the Vista Cruiser nameplate rather than the Cutlass nameplate. The optional third seat was rear-facing in the third generation Vista Cruiser. Oldsmobile Starfire (1961–1966), a sporty and luxurious hardtop coupe and convertible based on the 88. The Starfire featured interiors with leather bucket seats and a center console with floor shifter, along with a standard hydromatic transmission, power steering and brakes, and power windows and seats on convertibles. It was powered by Oldsmobile's most powerful rocket V8 engine, a 394-seat engine from 1961 to 1964 rated from 330 to 345 horsepower 257 kilowatts, and a larger 425-seat Super Rocket V8 from 1965 to 1966, rated at 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts. Oldsmobile Jetstar I 1964 to 1966 Life for the somewhat obscure Jetstar I started in 1964. It was designed to be a low-cost option to the successful full-size Starfire series, more of a direct competitor to the Pontiac Grand Prix. Standard equipment included the 345 horsepower, 257 kilowatts, 394 CI Starfire engine, vinyl bucket seats and console. Keeping the sport part of the Starfire, it possessed less of the luxury and glitz. It weighed in at 4,028 pounds, and 16,084 were produced for 1964. It was a Starfire without the frills and was informally dubbed the Poor Man's Starfire. Proving to be an ill-fated model, 1965 concluded the two-year run for the Jetstar I only 6,552 were sold. The introduction of the Pontiac GTO and Oldsmobile 4-2 in 1964 ensured the future of the muscle cars were the intermediates, and the front-drive Toronado loomed big in Oldsmobile's future taking over the flagship status from the Starfire. Further confused with its lesser brethren with the Jetstar 88 nameplate, there was no way but out for the Jetstar I and close examination of prices revealed that unless one bought a sparsely optioned JS1, there was little financial incentive to buy a JS1 over the Starfire. But lost in the mix was a high-performance car in the 65 Jetstar I trimmed down to 3,963 hash. The 65 model was an overlooked performance car. The new 370 horsepower, 276 kilowatts, 425 CI Starfire engine delivered 470 pounds-feet, 637 Nm of torque, was durable, and was quite an improvement over the 64,394. The new Oldsmobile turbo hydromatic transmission was a vast performance improvement over the previous Slim Jim hydromatic transmission. Also, Oldsmobile offered the Muncie four-speed with Hurst shifter in 65. Oldsmobile boasted in a 1965 press release that a Jetstar I proved to be the top accelerator of the entire event at the 1965 Pure Oil Performance Trials in Daytona Beach. Those trials were sanctioned and supervised by NASCAR. Note, between 1964 and 1966, Oldsmobile named its least expensive full-size model the Oldsmobile Jetstar 88 which the Jetstar I was not related to, and priced $500 to $600 below the Jetstar I. Oldsmobile Delta 88 1949-1999, while the 88 Series of Oldsmobiles date back to the 1940s, and were offered in a variety of trim levels. The introduction of the Delta 88, which superseded the Super 88 line as Olds mid level full sized vehicles, was a watershed event for the division. Better trimmed than the low price Dynamic 88 range, but available in a wider range of body styles than the Super 88 had been, the Delta range was an immediate hit with car buyers. It quickly overshadowed the Dynamic 88 line. 
To pump life into the Dynamic 88 range, Oldsmobile renamed it the Delmont 88 for 1967. However the Delta continued to climb in popularity to the point where Oldsmobile dropped the Delmont range at the end of the 1968 model run. Eventually the Delta 88 was joined by the Delta 88 Royal, a premium trimmed Delta. The Delta continued to be Oldsmobile's most popular full-size line. In an attempt to modernize marketing efforts as Oldsmobile's fortunes declined, the Delta name was dropped in 1989, but the car lived on as the 88 until Oldsmobile ended its production in 1999. Oldsmobile Toronado a front-wheel drive coupé in the personal luxury car category, introduced in 1966. At the time, the largest and most powerful front-wheel drive car ever produced, and one of the first modern front-wheel drive cars equipped with an automatic transmission. The original Toronado was powered by a 425 SID Super Rocket V8 engine rated at 385 horsepower, 287 kilowatts, mated to a three-speed turbo hydromatic transmission. The Toronado was Motor Trend Magazine's 1966 Car of the Year. Topic Troubles and Triumphs 1970 to 1989 Oldsmobile sales soared in the 1970s and 1980s reaching an all-time high of 1,066,122 in 1985 based on popular designs positive reviews from critics and perceived quality and reliability with the Cutlass series becoming North America's top-selling car by 1976 By this time Olds had displaced Pontiac and Plymouth as the third best-selling brand in the US behind Chevrolet and Ford in the late 1970s and again in the mid-1980s, model year production topped 1 million units, something only Chevrolet and Ford had achieved. The soaring popularity of Oldsmobile vehicles resulted in a major issue in the late 1970s. At that time, each General Motors division produced its own V8 engines, and in 1977, Oldsmobile, Chevrolet, Pontiac, and Buick each produced a unique 350 cubic inch displacement V8. It was during the 1977 model year that demand exceeded production capacity for the Oldsmobile V8 and as a result, Oldsmobile began equipping most full-size Delta 88 models those with federal emission specifications with the Chevrolet 350 engine instead. Although it was widely debated whether there was a difference in quality or performance between the two engines, there was no question that the engines were different from one another. Many customers were loyal Oldsmobile buyers who specifically wanted the Rocket V8, and did not discover that their vehicle had the Chevrolet engine until they performed maintenance and discovered that purchased parts did not fit. This became a public relations nightmare for GM. Following this debacle, disclaimers stating that Oldsmobiles are equipped with engines produced by various GM divisions were tacked onto advertisements and sales literature. All other GM divisions followed suit. In addition, GM quickly stopped associating engines with particular divisions and to this day, all GM engines are produced by GM Powertrain GMPT and are called GM corporate engines instead of GM division engines. Although it was the popularity of the Oldsmobile division vehicles that prompted this change, declining sales of V8 engines would have made this change inevitable as all but the Chevrolet version of the 350 cubic inch engine were eventually discontinued. Oldsmobile also introduced a 5.7L V8 diesel engine option on its custom cruiser, Delta 88 and 98 models in 1978, and a smaller 4.3L displacement V8 diesel on the 1979 Cutlass Salon and Cutlass Supreme, Cutlass Calais models. These were largely based on corresponding gasoline engines but with heavier duty cast blocks, redesigned heads and fast glow plugs, and on the 5.7L, oversized cranks, main bearings and wrist pins. There were several problems with these engines, including water and corrosion in the injectors no water separator in the fuel line, paraffin clogging of fuel lines and filters in cold weather, reduced lubrication in the heads due to undersized oil galleys, head bolt failures, and the use of aluminum rockers and stanchions in the 4.3L V8 engines. While the 5.7L was also offered on various Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, GMC, and Pontiac models, it was eventually discontinued by all divisions in 1985. V6 diesels of 4.3L displacement were also offered between 1982 and 1985. Notable models, Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme 1966 more performance and luxury than the lower-priced Cutlass and Cutlass S models, fitting in at the lower end of the personal luxury car market. Models were similar to the Pontiac Grand Prix, Chevrolet Monte Carlo, and Buick Regal. Oldsmobile 88 1949-1999 Oldsmobile full-sized family coupé and sedan. Led Oldsmobile sales from 1950 to 1974. 
downsized in 1977, became front-wheel drive in 1986. The first generation 88 is reputed to have inspired the song Rocket 88, arguably the first rock and roll record. Oldsmobile 98 (1941–1996), Oldsmobile full-sized luxury coupe and sedan that was downsized in 1977 and 1985, became front-wheel drive in 1985. Oldsmobile Toronado (1966–1992), personal luxury coupe, major redesign, downsized the car in 1979, then again in 1986, Motor Trend Car of the Year in '66. Oldsmobile Omega 1973 to 1984 European flavored compact car originally based on the Chevrolet Nova and later the Chevrolet Citation Oldsmobile Calais or Cutlass Calais 1985 to 1991 popular compact coupe and sedan on GM's N body platform similar to the Pontiac Grand Am The series name was taken from what was formerly the high end option package for Cutlass Supreme models Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra 1982 to 1996 popular selling upscale mid-sized car based on GM's A platform. During its run, the Cutlass Sierra was Oldsmobile's best-selling model. It consistently ranked among the highest rated vehicles by JD Power and Associates. It was ranked the best in price class on July 30, 1992 and the top ranked American made car on May 28, 1992. It was also named Safe Car of the Year by Prevention Magazine on March 6, 1992. Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser 1971 to 1992 full size station wagon downsized in 1977 within Oldsmobile the Custom Cruiser shared its trim with either or both the Oldsmobile Delta 88 or Oldsmobile 98 following the further downsizing of Oldsmobile sedans in 1986 the Custom Cruiser effectively became a standalone model line with the discontinuation of the Cutlass Supreme Classic in 1988 the Custom Cruiser became the sole Oldsmobile sold with rear wheel drive Oldsmobile Starfire 1975 to 1980 sporty subcompact hatchback coupe similar to the Chevrolet Monza which was itself based on the Chevrolet Vega Oldsmobile Forenza 1982 to 1988 compact sedan hatchback coupe and station wagon based on GM's J body sharing the same platform with the Chevrolet Cavalier Pontiac Sunbird and Buick Skyhawk Topic 1990s After the tremendous success of the 1970s and 1980s, things changed quickly for Oldsmobile and by the early 1990s the brand had lost its place in the market, squeezed between other GM divisions, and with competition from new upscale import makes Acura, Infiniti and Lexus. GM continued to use Oldsmobile sporadically to showcase futuristic designs and as a guinea pig for testing new technology, with Oldsmobile offering the Toronado Trofeo, which included a visual instrument system with a calendar, datebook, and climate controls. For 1995, Oldsmobile introduced the Aurora, which would be the inspiration for the design of its cars from the mid-1990s onward. The introduction of the Aurora marked as General Motors' catalyst to reposition Oldsmobile as an upscale import fighter. Accordingly, Oldsmobile received a new logo based on the familiar «Rocket» theme. Nearly all the existing model names were gradually phased out, the Cutlass Calais in 1991, the Toronado and Custom Cruiser in 1992, the 98 and Sierra, formerly Cutlass Sierra in 1996, Cutlass Supreme in 1997, and finally the 88 and Cutlass which had only been around since 97 in 1999. They were replaced with newer, more modern models with designs inspired by the Aurora. Redesigned and new models introduced from 1990 to 2004, Oldsmobile Achiever 1992 to 1998, compact sedan and coupe Oldsmobile Alero 1999 to 2004, compact sport sedan and coupe Oldsmobile Aurora 1995 to 2003, full-size luxury performance sedan, redesigned for 2001, Oldsmobile Bravada 1991 to 2004, mid-size premium sport utility vehicle, redesigned for 1996 and 2002, Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser 1971 to 1992 full size station wagon redesigned for 1991 Oldsmobile Cutlass 1997 to 1999 mid size sedan Oldsmobile 88 1949 to 1999 full size premium sedan redesigned for 1992 Oldsmobile Intrigue 1998 to 2002 mid size luxury sport sedan Oldsmobile 98 1941 to 1996 full size luxury sedan redesigned for 1991 Oldsmobile Silhouette 1990 to 2004 premium minivan redesigned for 1997 Topic 2000s 
In spite of Oldsmobile's critical successes since the mid-1990s, a reported shortfall in sales and overall profitability prompted General Motors to announce in December 2000 its plans to shut down the Oldsmobile organization. That announcement was officially revealed two days after Oldsmobile distributed the Bravada SUV, which became another critical hit for the division and turned out to be its final vehicle to manufacture. The phase-out was conducted on the following schedule February 2001, the 2002 Bravada, the company's last new model, hits Oldsmobile showrooms June 2002, production ends for Intrigue and the Aurora V6 sedans March 2003, Aurora V8 sedan production ends January 2004, Bravada SUV production ends March 2004, Silhouette minivan production ends April 2004, Alero Compact Car Production ends the last 500 Aleros, Auroras, Bravadas, Silhouettes and Intrigues produced received special Oldsmobile heritage emblems and markings which signified Final 500. All featured a unique dark cherry metallic paint scheme. Auroras and Intrigues would be accompanied by special Final 500 literature. The Oldsmobile division's last completed production car was an Alero GLS four-door sedan, which was signed by all of the Olds assembly line workers. It was on display at the RE Olds Transportation Museum located in Lansing, Michigan until GM's bankruptcy, when it retook possession of the car. It is now located at the GM Heritage Center in Sterling Heights, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Oldsmobile models Production <laughs> 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 Topic Models Topic Concept Topic Canadian market In Canada the range was limited, with the Oldsmobile Silhouette and Oldsmobile Bravada being unavailable to Canadian consumers until much later in their production life. The Oldsmobile Cutlass 1997 to 1999 version was not offered there. The Oldsmobile Silhouette was sold in Canada from 1998 onwards, unlike in the United States. The Oldsmobile Bravada was unavailable in Canada until its third generation in 2002. Previous models sold in Canada were grey import vehicles. Topic: Other markets. In Mexico all Oldsmobile models were sold under the Chevrolet brand. The Oldsmobile Alero was sold as a Chevrolet in Europe but it retained Oldsmobile's badge, logo on the front. The Chevrolet name was used due to buyers' unfamiliarity with Oldsmobile in Europe. <laughs> Marketing themes Early on in its history, Olds enjoyed a healthy public relations boost from the 1905 hit song In My Merry Oldsmobile. The same theme—a fast, powerful Olds car helping the driver romance the opposite sex—was updated in the 1950s with the iconic hit Rocket 88. The strong public relations efforts by GM in the 1950s was epitomized in the Motorama, a one-company auto show extravaganza. Millions of Americans attended, in a spirit not unlike a mini World's Fair. Every GM division had a dream car. Oldsmobile's dream, concept car was called the Golden Rocket. The Dr. Oldsmobile theme was one of Oldsmobile's most successful marketing campaigns in the early 70s. It involved fictional characters created to promote the wildly popular 442 muscle car. Dr. Oldsmobile was a tall lean professor type who wore a white lab coat. His assistants included Elephant Engine Ernie who represented the big block 455 rocket engine. Shifty Sydney was a character who could be seen swiftly shifting his hand using a Hearst shifter. Wind Tunnel Waldo had slicked back hair that appeared to be constantly wind blown. He represented Oldsmobile's wind tunnel testing, that produced some of the sleekest designs of the day. Another character included High Spy who had his ear to the ground as he checked out the competition. A public relations campaign in the late 1980s proclaimed that this was not your father's Oldsmobile. Ironically, many fans of the brand say that the declining sales were in fact caused by the This is not your father's Oldsmobile 
Campaign, as the largest market for Oldsmobiles was the population whose parents had, in fact, owned Oldsmobiles and that by going away from the traditional vehicles that Oldsmobiles brand was built upon, lost many loyal buyers and put the brand on a collision course with Pontiac and Buick which led to internal cannibalization and a downfall from which it could never recover. Oldsmobile's final major ad campaign had the slogan, Start Something, in a last-ditch effort to market to younger buyers at the turn of the millennium. Topic. Advertising gallery Topic. Motorsport Topic. NASCAR Oldsmobile is especially known for its competition in NASCAR. Beginning with the Rocket 88, Oldsmobile proved heavily competitive in stock car racing. In the 60s, the Rocket 88 was replaced by the 442. Eventually, the Cutlass would lead Oldsmobile into the 80s before GM reduced its entries to Chevrolet and Pontiac in the 90s. It was the restyled body of the Cutlass Supreme that along with the Chevrolet Monte Carlo, Buick Regal, and Pontiac Grand Prix ushered in the downsized cars into NASCAR Cup competition. While the Cutlass looked almost identical to the Buick Regal which scored 35-plus victories in the 1981 through 1985 seasons, the Cutlass like the Dodge Murata, didn't take one checkered flag, and many teams moved away from it in 1983 to the Regal, Grand Prix, and restyled Monte Carlo SS. This was a rude awakening to Oldsmobile, which was getting used to wins on the NASCAR circuit. The body style of the 1988-92 Cutlass proved to be a winner for NASCAR competition and it visited the victory circle 13 times between 1989 and 1992, when Oldsmobile ended its racing program. IMSA GT In the IMSA GT Championship, Oldsmobile would provide power for IMSA GT prototypes alongside Chevrolet and Buick. The Cutlass was used in IMSA GTO along with other vehicles also being used in Transam and NASCAR. Topic: <inaudible> IndyCar. Oldsmobile was an engine supplier in the IndyCar series along with Infinity starting in 1996. Topic: <inaudible> Transam series. The Cutlass was used in the Transam series during the 1980s. Many vehicles also being used in NASCAR at the time were used in Transam and IMSA GTO. See also Oldsmobile portal List of automobile manufacturers List of defunct automobile manufacturers of the United States Oldsmobile diesel engine Oldsmobile quad 4 engine Oldsmobile straight 6 engine Oldsmobile V8 engine Irving Jacob Reuter